Okay, everyone, so I'm going to talk about uh, business today. And a lot of my subscribers have said, well, you know, your YouTube channel is mainly about investing and personal finance and so on, but I'm a business owner or whatever. I would appreciate it if you did a video about business success and what you think are the key lessons that you've learned in terms of business life. Now, number one, one thing I would say is that it's much better to have experience in the domain that you are actually going to go into. And now, as what I mean by that is entrepreneurship has become really cool these days, really sexy. It's all about the good idea, apparently. But actually, the reality is, if you get good at a job or you're in an industry for a long time, you'll have existing client relationships, right? You don't then need to get new clients on the first day in business. Now, as if you've been a doctor for 20 years and you open up your own clinic, you probably have existing relationships or a reputation, even if it goes against the you know, NDA agreement. And same in any industry. Obviously, you have to be careful with what kind of agreement you got for your former company, but even if you can't take your ex-clients, you do have experience in the domain. So that's the first thing. Now, number two, you have to realize that it sounds so obvious, but in business, right, there's two sides to the balance sheet. There's revenue and there's expenditure. Most business people, though, they just think about the revenue. They think, well, if I do this, this amount will come in, but it doesn't always work like that. So most people make the key mistake of thinking they need to spend more money than they do. A great example is this, right? People spend loads of money on flash offices, even though these days a lot of people like lower cost online operations, but people have kind of convinced themselves that if they have a flash office, they're gonna get more revenue. Point is though, it's always better, of course, to focus on just starting small. If you're gonna experiment, which is very important, by the way, you could put that as number three, the importance of experimenting. Having said that, you should always start small. For example, if you've never done Facebook ads before, of course you should only start with $50 or $100. You shouldn't start with $50,000, right? So keep it step by step when it comes to the expenditure side. Also, I would say, get in the habit of thinking about what's in it for the other person. In other words, it is human nature to think what's in it for me, right? That is, you know, universal. Everyone has that, the young and the old men, women, people 100 years ago, I'm sure people in our 100 years. But if you get in the habit of speaking less than the other person, always thinking to put yourself in the other person's shoes, empathy, what's in it for them as opposed to what's in it for me, I think long-term you're more likely uh, to succeed. Also, read a lot. I mean, for example, some of the books like How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie is just one example of many. There are certain timeless things uh, in business that will always work. Having said that, there's always new things that will work. So a lot of the things in the digital age, I'm not actually by nature a tech person, but by reading a lot, it allows yourself to adapt yourself um, over time. Also, I'd say it's important to actually define who is an ideal client. Now, what I mean by that is this. Everyone has an ideal client, but most people are worried about saying it. In other words, when you start in business, you want to be all things to all people, but we've all had those clients who are completely not worth the hassle. So there's nothing wrong with saying to people, look, this is who I am. If you don't like it, you know, I'm sure there'll be another person who will deal with it. Like for me, right? My ideal client is a relatively trusting person who uses online uh, mechanisms and, you know, in other words, when it comes to me, say, communicating with a client, I just want to have an informal relationship with a client where I can, you know, message them on WhatsApp and things are done relatively quickly and so on. I do not want a client who's really untrusting or is really slow or uh, thinks the big is beautiful. I'm not a corporate kind of person, right? But for other people, maybe, that is the kind of client they want to attract. But no matter what industry you are in, if you think, what's my ideal client and work your way back from there, it will give you focus. So a lot of the people have a very specific niche. They might be targeting, I don't know, uh, doctors. They might be um, a recruiter who's targeting people in the healthcare industry, whatever. But if you start to target specific groups of people as opposed to being all things to all people, I think that's one of the keys. Likewise, I think it's also good to have something where you have some kind of uh, residual income. So when it comes to a uh, product or service, if you've got something where people are paying monthly or indeed there's some kind of passive income, you also have to focus on something as an owner that's going to give you kind of a baseline. Um, you can't call it a salary, right? Because an owner has many expenditures or many things to consider. But I think 
as an owner, it's also important to see the long term, not just think about revenue this month or sales this month or expenditure this month. Always think of the long term. So if you've got an opportunity to do something, it could be even something incredibly small where you offer a service where people are only paying $5 a month. It's not a key service that you're doing, but it gives you a small residual income. But over time, it builds up. So I say focus on the residual income as well as the, the big paydays. And also another thing is never feel guilty. What do I mean by that? We live in a society now where a lot of people, it's almost like unlike the 80s, like making money is considered kind of a dirty thing by some people in society. But ultimately, as long as you're doing business in the right way, you should never feel ashamed about how much money you're making, regardless of what, if you're not making much money at all, you're making a lot of money, you're making something in the middle, as long as you're doing business in a proper way, you should not feel guilty. In fact, if your product or service is adding value to people, of course, you should want to sell that as much as possible, give people that benefit. So if you focus on giving people a benefit, you can look yourself in the mirror, you know you're doing something right. You should want to make as much money as possible, right? For example, let's say, take a, an, an example like you're a healthcare uh, practitioner who is offering, I don't know, surgery to people in the developing world for a cheaper price. Of course, you should want to sell that to as many people as possible. And the same thing with what I'm doing, what, what, what many people are doing, right? So never feel guilty about what you're actually doing. Okay, everyone, uh, have a good day.